Well, I think first we have to talk about the ways in which they're similar, and then we have to talk about the ways in which they're different. Um, they, they are similar at times, and even almost the same thing, when the government is able to enlist the private sector to collect data for it. Um, this was the PRISM program that Edward Snowden revealed. Uh, there are many other ways in which the government relies on technology companies uh, to actually be its surveillance agents. Uh, and if the law makes it easy for the government to get information from private corporations, then private surveillance is public surveillance. Uh, and we're actually talking about the same problem. And, 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 and we can discuss this more later, but I think that one of the most important outcomes of the Snowden revelations is the way in which it has made corporations, technology companies, um, more adverse to governments and spy agencies, to, to, to make them, for business reasons perhaps, um, stand up more for their customers' privacies and not work uh, you know, in the dark, hand in glove, with these governments to, to turn over information. Um, there is a way, though, in which it's a different problem. Um, and you can think about the difference between being a citizen and being a consumer. Um, but, um, uh, you know, they do raise different sets of issues. I have said uh, in the past that, that, that I want technology companies to stand up to government uh, and protect me as a citizen. But I want the government to stand up to technology companies and protect me as a consumer. Uh, that we're going to need to have more effective and more powerful government regulators to make sure that we're not abused in this era of big data. Uh, and, and if we want to have an understanding of what the future will be, um, we can think about how big data on both the government side and the corporate side is already reshaping our lives. Uh, you know, in the United States, um, your credit score. Um, which is, uh, you know, some secret number that is generated through secret, secret algorithmic processes by various corporations can have real bearing on whether you can get a loan, on whether you can rent an apartment. Um, this is very important. And anyone who has ever encountered an error on a credit score has already tasted the future uh, on, on, on just how difficult life can be when we have all of this collection with real world consequences, but, but non-transparent processes for getting fairness, for getting due process. You know, on the government side, uh, we already have different lines at our airports for so-called trusted travelers versus less trusted travelers. And so you can imagine a world in which each of us has a consumer score and each of us has a citizen score. Uh, and these will actually have real bearings on what options are available to us. Uh, and that is the way that we're headed unless we have the right kinds of protections built into these systems um, uh, to protect us. Uh, you know, the, pri the American privacy scholar Daniel Solov uh, has made the point that that when we talk about George Orwell, we're probably using the wrong metaphor for the modern surveillance state. We should be talking about Franz Kafka. We should be thinking about the trial, um, these massive faceless bureaucracies that have a lot of information about us, that are using it in ways that, that we can't see, uh, but that affect us very, very concretely um, with, without open, meaningful ways for us to protest.